pining over the past five postseasons. I was wondering if you could just speak to how difficult it is to get to the rim, finish at the rim, and then defensively, the maybe increased priority of protecting the paint. Well, I think um, I think there's an increased priority in protecting the paint because three-point shooting is so good. And so it goes back to the Steph Curry effect. Um, if you if you can constantly get into someone's paint, then it opens up. The world opens up. The three-point shots open up, and that's what everyone wants to take away in today's day and age. Um, and so, and then, you know, I think the game's just much more athletic than it was before. Guys are more athletic, and you know, it, it's it's just way tougher. Like Jason Tatum, six ten. 6'11", wherever he is, 2'3". <laughs> Kevin Durant's 7 feet. It's a, really a 2'3". Like, yes, in the way the game has changed, you take Kevin Durant's a 3'4". Kevin Durant started his career as a 2'. And so when you look at that, the overall length of guys um, in this league, and then you couple that with the athleticism, and it just makes it so much tougher to get to the rim and finish. Uh, and I think that's that's a huge change in this game. And then also, um, you know, teams are hunting more threes. And so even the priority for most teams, it is to get in the lane and kick out for a three, as opposed to getting to the lane and finishing at the rim or getting to the lane and getting to your mid range. It's to get there and kick out. And I think that adds to the drop as well. First row on the left. Hey, Draymond, tell me your thoughts on clutch points. Um, we were just talking to Clay, and Clay said that whenever he has a bad shooting night, he kind of YouTube's game six Clay. That's his thing. Um, I was curious, have you been around him when he does that at all? And uh, do you have like a, a game seven Draymond that you YouTube whenever you have a bad game or something like that? I see your name, and I saw um, last night where you pointed out or maybe two days ago where you pointed out that there was a question I was asked about Kevin Durant and that's why I mentioned him. So I want to say thank you for your honesty um, and for your duty to this job. I know uh, the world that we live in now is all about clickbait and, and people will cut the question off so that they can try to make it appear as if I'm just up here talking about Kevin Durant. like. Like I don't have anything else better to do in my life. So I want to say I appreciate you. Um, and just upholding the integrity of media. Because when I speak about the new media, that's what I'm speaking about. The integrity of this business has been lost. And bringing that integrity back to this business. So I want to say thank you um, on, on your work. That was incredible, and I appreciate that. Uh, as far as Game 6, Clay, I, have, I haven't seen him uh, YouTubing it. And the reality is if I did, we'd probably make fun of him. So. <laughs> It's probably good that I haven't. <clears throat> but the real, uh, I think for us, what's up, Mark? I think for us, you, uh, you, you, you tend to go back to those experiences. You tend to draw from that. And, and because ultimately, when you think about things like from our perspective, especially a, a shooter like Clay, you always hear the term, oh, get to the free throw line or get a layup because you just need to see the ball go in the rim. It's not always that simple in the game. And so if you can go back to that and like, just a reminder, like, I know I can do that. I know what I'm capable of. I can go back, I can feel that, and it gets you to feeling good about yourself. I think that's a very big deal. And I think that's an underrated thing. It's the power of the mind. You know, I always talk about how powerful one's mind is. Obviously we all know that in the world. The power of the mind, if I can see that, I can, I can, I can get that in my memory bank and I understand it. Now I can bring that to fruition. Now I can lean up on that. Man, I know I'm capable of doing that. And so uh, I, I definitely have times where I go back and I look at old games, um, you know, making shots or defending, whatever it is that you feel you need to come up at and just try to draw from that experience. Second row on the right. Boy, man, exhaling this media. Draymond, how, how much through the first two games have you felt that this series is kind of a contrast to styles and, you know, some of the physicality you tried to instill in game two? Did, did you feel like that was a response to something the Celtics were doing in game one or just something you saw coming in this series that 
you felt you needed to respond to? I just thought it was something that we need to bring. You know, you get to the NBA Finals and, and, and physicality and, and um, you know, meeting force with force is important. Uh, and so uh, it's just something that you have to bring uh, to this game. I thought, you know, when, when I looked back at game one, when I watched the film and, and even just how I felt, I just think I just didn't think they felt us enough. And you can't get to this stage to, you know, to this level. And the reason you lose is because a team didn't feel you. You know, um, that's a shame. You know, you have to lose once you get to this level because a team was just better than you. And, and I wouldn't be able to sleep with myself or. or not sleep with myself. I wouldn't be able to live. With <laughs> I wouldn't be able to live with myself <laughs> if I'm going on about my summer, and we lost the NBA Finals because we couldn't meet force with force. And so I think that that was just kind of it for me, and understanding that, like I said, that is my department. That's where I'm supposed to lead, and I can't let my guys down. Third row on the left, Gary Washburn. Uh, Gary Washburn, Boston Globe. Jerome, is there an art to trash talk? One. Secondly. When a young guy comes and plays against you, and it's obvious he either models his game after you, or he might even say, man, I watched you growing up, and you talk trash to him, do you, do you, is that fresh meat for you? Or do you, and is there times you just say, I probably shouldn't have said that? Uh, there is an art to trash talking. Uh, if you grew up in Saginaw, Michigan, it's, it's naturally given to you. And so, for me personally, growing up the way I did, you can't survive if you can't talk on the court. You can go out there quiet if you want to. You can play as good as you want. If you're quiet, they're going to think you saw. They're going to keep trying to bully you. And so that's just kind of the way I learned. Um, for, a, for a young guy to, I think there's a balance, right? Like, I, I'm assuming you're talking Grant Williams. Yeah. Uh, of course you are. <laughs> I think when you see that, when you see a guy say, man, I, 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 I grew up watching him, you appreciate it. Because you know that's why you work. You work to create a path for the next young guy. Like my goal when I came in here was to create a path for Grant Williams. And so to hear him say that, it's an honor. Like, and so I don't take that for granted one bit. When a guy comes and starts, when you say that and then you start talking junk to me, then yes, I'm going to say something about that, of course. But like, I didn't say anything about that game one because he wasn't talking to me. Like, I'm not going to go watch his press conference where he gives me props, where he appreciates my game and then go throw it in his face. Like, that's whack to me. Like, I'm not doing that. I, I, that's just not how I roll. Um, LeBron James, when I was wearing LeBron James sneakers in my first one, two, three years and playing against him, he didn't throw in my face like, dude, you got on my sneakers. This is just not something you do. Once he started going at me and it got chippy and, you know, he's, yap, 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 and all right, bro, like, you can't say that and then come and say this. Like, it just doesn't add up to me. So then you just go wherever you got to go. And for me, that's where I'm going. Do I feel like, um, no, nah, man, I shouldn't have said that. That was too, no. Nah. It's the heat of the battle. You know, you, you, you're out there on the court. You get to feel sorry for him or yourself. If you want to, it's going to turn on you. So, no, you just keep it moving. Third row in the middle. I'm also someone who, you know, things happen on the basketball court. Things are said on the basketball court. It's the basketball court. I then leave the basketball court. I go home to my life, my normal life. But, you know, I am not one that's like, oh, man, such and such did this on the court, and now I need to fill a way out. Like, it's the basketball court. Last question. Uh, Joseph Mahone, CLS Media. Uh, Draymond, uh, along those lines, who's a player that you saw growing up that may have taking that out of you in terms of like giving you that tenacity, that aggressiveness. Uh, guys, two guys that were talking after the game, after the game two was Gary Payne and Cedric Maxwell. They talked about that. It, you, they got a glimpse of that old school trash talk and physicality basketball that they both you know, lived. And I'm wondering, obviously you, that's been part of your game for a long time now, but is there someone in particular that inspired that or, or where, where did that originally come from, I guess? 
No, I think it just comes from growing up in Saginaw, playing at Best Park, playing at the Civitan Recreation Center. Obviously, in growing up, I watched guys like Gary Payton, um, Rasheed Wallace. You know, I watched all those guys and, and how, how they went about their business. Dennis Rodman, like, you know, you seen those guys over the years, and I have a huge appreciation for Uncle Oak, um, you know, how he enforced things. Like, I, I that, that's a part of the game. Like, that is a skill. And so uh, I have a huge appreciation for those guys. I saw <laughs> I saw what Sasha, Sasha Maxwell said. And, you know, what, one thing that baffles me about the 80s or the 90s or whatever you want to call when basketball was so much more physical is some of the guys that be talking weren't the guys that was punching people. <laughs> like, like they, they, they act like, you know, guys was just walking around the court like, I'm hitting, I'm hitting this guy in the nose. There were a few guys back then that would lay you out, that would knock you out, that would foul you and get thrown out the game, Bill Lambeer, Rick Mahorn. But everybody running around acting like they were that. Y'all were getting bullied. Like, like, and so it baffles me when every guy, just because they played in the 80s, uh, just because they played in the 90s, is like, man, if you played in our day, you get knocked out. Like, no, nah, not really, because it wouldn't be you. So, okay, you said Rick Mahorn would have knocked me out. Rick Mahorn probably knocks you out. Like, Bill Lambert probably lays you out. So were there enforcers from, of that time? Of course. Would they have knocked you out? Of course. Their fine was also $2. Like, you know, it's just not the same day and age. If I go knock somebody out, I probably get fined a million dollars. Like, it's just, it just don't work the same. And so, you know, when guys get to making these comparisons or talking about, oh, if you played in this day and age, like, yeah. And if you played in this day and age, you would have had to be way more skilled than you were. And it's, it's, it's just different, you know? Like comparing, um, comparing the physicality to the game and everybody acting like they were just the most physical and brutal enforcers, it's like everybody acting like they shoot the ball like Steph Curry today. You know, it's like, then it was physical. Now it's shooting. Everybody can't shoot the ball. Imagine me in 20 years like, man, if you played in my day, you had to shoot. Like, like, like yeah, uh, guys did shoot better and more. But that don't mean you shot that well. Like, and so it just baffles me when guys get out here talking and they ain't got, you know, we got YouTube and they, you can pull up them highlights and they ain't got no YouTube fights. Like, you see them on the court getting bullied. But they talk about you and got punched in the face. These people be killing me. Y'all enjoy y'all day. <laughs>